Hello, third graders. My name is Mrs. Logan, and I'm gonna be putting together some STEM labs each week for us to do together. Um, keep watch for them either Thursday or Friday. They'll be uploaded to your Google Classroom, and I look fun. I look forward to having some fun with you this fall. Bye. Welcome to your first week of STEM. Uh, again, my name is Mrs. Logan. Let me tell you a little bit about myself. I love exploring and I love trying new things. I like traveling and hiking. One of my favorite things to do this summer was to swim in La Jolla Cove. Um, biking and scuba diving. I like getting dirty and messy and I like, I like making mistakes because I always seem to learn through my mistakes. Well, at least I hope I do most of the time. Um, I play the piano. I've lived in the Midwest, on the East Coast in Washington, D.C., and now I've been living in Carlsbad for the last, oh, 13 years or so. I really enjoy being inspired. Inspired by children, that's why I got into teaching. Inspired by people um, in my community and in the world. And one of my favorite inventors was also one who loved being inspired. His name is Thomas Edison. You may, uh, you may know of Thomas Edison, he had some brilliant um, inventions, but he was also one who was thrived on being inspired as well. Thomas Edison has many very um, thoughtful and um, inspiring quotes, and I'm going to share three of them with you today. The first one is this. The first one is, genius is 1% inspiration. Let me see if I can get this for you and 99% perspiration. So let's first start with genius. What does it mean to be a genius? Well, when I think of genius, I think of someone that's really smart. Um, but genius could also be an idea. It could be a thought. It could be something that someone makes. Genius is something clever. So genius is 1% inspiration. What's inspiration? Think about the root word of inspire. If you are inspired by someone, um, it means that somebody did something that you kind of want to copy. Like you really admire what they've done. It is inspiring you to do something. Maybe it's an athlete and um, a really strong, a good basketball player or something, and you wanna be like that basketball player. They inspire you to do, uh, play harder, practice, and get better. So genius is 1% inspiration. Okay. And 99% perspiration. What does it mean to perspire? Now that might be a word that you're not as familiar with perspire. It sounds like perseverance, um, which means you try really hard and you keep trying and trying and trying until you um, get something right, persevere. But perspiration is actually kind of what we've been doing a lot of this last week with it's so hot and the humidity and if you go outside you start sweating. Sweating is perspiration. It's the body's way of cooling off. So when we look at that quote by Thomas Edison, genius is 1% inspiration and 99% perspiration. Genius is 1% of being inspired by something and 99% of hard work, perspiring. Usually if you go and you do something like you do your jogathon for your school, or you go out and you play a sport, or you know, you're working really hard and you're perspiring. So Thomas Edison is telling us in this quote, genius is just maybe an idea. Seeing somebody do something and then being inspired, and working really, really hard to um, build upon it. And actually, one of the most famous inventions that Thomas Edison uh, came up with was the light bulb, right? I mean, 
pretty amazing. Um, but Thomas Edison wasn't the very first person to come up with this idea. Thomas Edison, American inventor, was inspired by a English um, inventor named Joseph Swan. Joseph Swan was working on this idea of the incandescent light bulb in the late 1800s. And Joseph Swan spent decades getting a filter, uh, um, a pretty rudimentary basic light bulb um, to, um, to bring to the science community and to share with the world. Thomas Jefferson read about it and was inspired by what Joseph Swan, Swan was doing. So Thomas Edison then went and spent another 20 years perfecting the light bulb. He changed it. He was able to patent things. Um, he was able to make it so that it was a, um, like a vacuum sealed carbon filtration system and he made it um, better because of all his perspiration, all of his hard work on um, that inspiration that he got from Joseph Swan. So I was inspired by a nine-year-old for what is going to be our first activity, our first week. So um, check out this kiddo. called Kane's Arcade. It's open songs, weekends only, and it's really cheap. Kane does not pass by on K without stopping in. He loves tickets, playing games, he loves prizes, so it was only natural for him to build his own arcade. He loves to see how things are built. He takes all his toys apart to see how they work. He can't put them back together, but he takes them apart. Kane spent summer vacation coming to work with me. We sell auto parts in East LA. My dad has a lot of boxes back there. We ship parts out, so I cut them up. I make my arcade games out of it. My first game I made, the basketball hoop I got at Shaggy's Pizza, and it's really cool. He taped it onto a box, and he was offering people chances to play for like a nickel. He started from that little game, and little by little, they started getting fancier and fancier and eventually he took over the whole store. I met Kane randomly. I had to get a door handle for my 96 Corolla, so I pulled into this used auto parts store and I just came across this elaborate cardboard arcade. I asked him how much it was to play. He's like, for one dollar you get four turns, but for two dollars you get a fun pass. Like, well, how many turns do you get a fun pass? You get 500 turns for a fun pass. I got a fun pass. I made this fun pass that expires in one month and you get 500 plays on any of these games. It was a great deal. Then I started making my office. It has like a speaker on the other side I could talk through. I got tokens, my business card, fun passes, and prizes. The first prizes, I used my own toys, like the cars were my own toys. I used to like Hot Wheels when I was little. I worked from the back office, and it kept him out of my hair all summer. He would work on the arcade, I'd work on eBay. My next game I built was a soccer game. First of all, I didn't have no goalies. People said it was too easy, so I bought army goalies. Those were my blockers. I told them, is it easy now? It's pretty hard, so you get two tickets to make it in here. I'll give it a four star. Hard game, challenging game, four star. One day, Kane tells me, Dad, I want to buy a claw machine. I said, why don't you just build it? So he got an S hook, put a piece of yarn on it, and then put a little track on top of the box. And I said, what the heck? He figured out how to make a claw machine with a string and a hook. And here's some sunglasses. These are the glasses I like the most. Store sunglasses. He bought calculators to put on every arcade game. And I go, what's that for? The calculators are here for security to see if it's a real fun pass or not. On the back, the fun pass has security number. So when you go here, 
You had to turn it on, you put the pin number in it, and you push a check mark button, and the big number comes out. That's how you know the real phone pass. My dad started the business in 1955. We have used auto parts. Most of our business has gone online because we really don't get the walk-up traffic like we used to. So Kane's chance of getting one customer is pretty hard. Kane's always waiting in front, sitting on his little chair, and trying to convince people to play. But not too much luck. Kane's arcade grand opening. But he never gets discouraged. He's always sweeping up and dusting off the games, waiting for customers. He only wears a shirt on Saturdays and Sundays when he comes to open up his arcade. And he's really proud of his shirt because he thought it up and he designed it. When Kane got back to school from vacation, he started telling everybody that he had an arcade. And nobody believed him. So he won't wear his shirt to school because he's afraid that kids might tease him about it. You know, he told them, hey, I got my own arcade. And they go, yeah, yeah, sure. Well, one day, my secretary comes running into the office. George, you never believe it. Somebody's playing Kane's Arcade. And I go, no way. So I was looking through the security camera, watching them. And I'm playing like miniature soccer, miniature basketball. And then when you score a point, he would crawl into the box and he pulls out these little tickets out of the side of the cardboard. Like real arcade games, tickets come from the bottom. And I was like, this kid's a genius. Nirvan came back one day when Kane wasn't here, and he told me, you mind if I make a short film about Kane's arcade? I said, well, actually, it's kind of like a little joke around here, because you're his only customer. I was blown away. Kane's only sold one Fun Pass. Like, the Fun Pass is an awesome deal. So Nirvan said, well, what if I can get him a couple customers? And I said, that would make his day. If you can get him one customer, he'll be happy. And at that point, we hatched a plan to invite everybody in LA to come play Kane's Arcade. The idea was to do a surprise flash mob at Kane's Arcade on Sunday afternoon. And I'm thinking, who's gonna come down to a junkyard Sunday afternoon, East LA? Who's really gonna show up? Then I made a little Facebook event, which a friend posted on Hidden LA, which has over 230,000 fans. And all of a sudden, it just started going viral. And their mom put it over the internet. And all of a sudden, within an hour, we had NBC News here. Then I hit the front page of Reddit, which is like being on the front page of the internet. I started reading the comments. I wish I could be there. I, I live in New York. I wish I could be there. I live in Europe. And I went, wow, it was getting big. The plan is, I'm going to take Kane to Shakey's Pizza. We're going to play some arcade games. We're gonna eat lunch while Nirvan sets up a big surprise party. Kane has no idea what we're doing. And when we get back, he's had the biggest surprise of his life. And the idea is just to get as many people as we can to come out to Kane's arcade and just make his day. Kane's dying to have one customer show up to his arcade. So Kane is to be the most surprised little boy in the whole wide world. Hey, we're ready. In about a minute, he's gonna arrive here. Hey, Kane, can we go home early today? We had no customers today. No. No? Come on, your dad's tired. No can do. No can do? Back, Kane. Wow. What's going on over here? <laughs> huh? We finally got some customers here. Kane, 
Kane, this is everybody. All these people came here to play your arcade. Did you know they were coming? No. Are you ready to run your arcade? Yeah. All right, what'd you guys come here to do? We came to play! Go ahead, welcome to Kane's Arcade, man. Well, I've seen before cardboard and the A could be for arcade. But the A could also be for auto parts, because it's pop shops where it's made. And the I's got to be for imagination, of which the kids got a lot. In the end, ought to be for noggin, where the idea first got thought. But then the E. Oh, yes, the E. Oh, yes, the E. Oh, yes, the E. All right, pretty cool kid, right? What a great idea. And way to inspire kids all over the world to, to be creative, clever, innovative. My favorite, I think my favorite was when he was feeding the tickets. Uh, he'd get inside the box and feed the tickets through. Um, so I want you to take on this challenge. Your challenge for the week is to build a game for Kane's Arcade. You can use any materials that you have. Maybe you want to use something that's in your recycle bin. Maybe you want to use parts or pieces from a game that you have at home. Um, anything. So Thomas Edison also said to invent you need a good imagination and a pile of junk. <laughs> he also said, the greatest invention in the world is the mind of a child. All right, third graders, once you've made your Kane's arcade game, if you'd like to upload a short 15 second video of your game, please attach it to this Flipgrid site. Have a great weekend, and I'll see you next week.